Today we'll create a linked layup from two ply decks from FiberSim that we'll be importing. One will be an undercore and another will be an overcore. And we'll also create a core in SimCenter 3D. So we'll begin opening up the geometry and we'll create our simulation files with a test linear static solution. Then we'll begin in the idealized part getting an associative copy of the geometry that we'd like to start to work with. I'm going to be working with layers. Here you can see another video on how to work with layers. And we'll begin by getting an associative copy of the bottom face. Now we'd also like to divide that face by some curves that we'll also get an associative copy of. And here's to reduce the number of clicks I'll select tangent curves and that should go around the full circle there and we'll do both of them. And that's where our core boundary is. All right, so let's turn off the geometry that we don't need. And now we can divide our face by those curves. Now we'll do that normal to the face. That looks good. And we can hide those curves because we won't need them again. All right, one last check. We want to ensure that our laminate is going to be built upward from this bottom surface. So in the positive Z direction. And there you can see we've displayed the normal for that surface. So that indicates the direction that our plies will be built in. And there you can see the core is in fact in the Z direction from that bottom face. All right, so that looks good. Let's go to the FEM. And we'll turn off the geometry that we don't need to see. And we'll create a shell mesh. We'll create it on the body so it will get all of the faces. And once we've created the mesh, we'll go ahead and edit the collector to specify that we want to create a laminate. And we're going to be importing the plies from FiberSim. We'll select our favorite failure theory and shear stress for bonding. Now before we import the plies from FiberSim, there's one more step that we'll take, which is to edit the mesh associated data to orient the material orientation vectors. Currently it's set at the first angle of the element edge. We'd like to change that to be consistent with a vector in the x direction. That will be our zero angle for our laminate. All right, now we're also going to be using some materials that we'll import and load into our FEM. These are the materials that are going to be specified in the layup coming from FiberSim. Now, if you don't have the laminate toolbar on, you can turn it on easily. And then we'll go and import our layup from FiberSim. We want to import this onto all the faces in our polygon body. So we'll select tangent faces. That way we can select one face and it will get all of our faces in our body. And we also want to ensure we don't have any extra elements or missing elements in any of the zones that will be defined by the divisions in our faces. 
So here we'll go ahead and select our undercore import from FiberSim and we're not going to import the materials from FiberSim. We've already loaded them into the part. The name of the materials will come in and it will associate it to the correct materials that we've already loaded. All right, so here you can see our layup. By default, the offset is going to be on the middle. We want that to start from the bottom and work its way up. So there you can see our default. That looks good. Then we can update our global layups and zones, and you can see it's created one zone. That one zone has all of the elements in it. We'll see that in just a moment. And here we can step through the plies in the layup and see that all of those plies, those five plies, are full body plies. And here you can see the element count matches the elements in that one zone. So we've got all of the elements accounted for. So that was our undercore that we imported. Next we'll import the overcore. And because those plies are possibly above the surface, we need to increase the search distance to the total thickness of our laminate. So it shouldn't be more than 11. We'll take all the same defaults and select our overcore import ply deck from Fibersyn. There you can see it's brought in eight plies. If we update the global layups and zones, we'll see that there's an error having to do with the elements referenced by more than one layup. That's because we need to create a linked layup that will be a single layup that will reference both of the imported layups from Fibersyn. And here is where we can specify our core between our under and over core ply decks. Here we'll select a core material. We can put in a description if we'd like and specify the thickness of our core. Now we also need to specify where the core is on the faces. So here I'll select our two faces. So let's make sure we're getting polygon faces. Select those two inner faces. And we've added our core. So let's update our global layups and zones. And here we can inspect the overcore ply deck. You can see the composition, thickness, angle, as well as the faces that are covered by those specific plies. So you can see we've got five plies that are full body and three that go just over the top of the core. Another way that we can visualize the ply stack up is by inflating the 2D elements into 3D elements. And here I've paused the video while we're extruding or inflating the laminate. And then we can take a section view through it. And we can see we have, starting from the undercore, we've got five full body plies, and we've got the core, and then we've got five more full body plies, followed by three plies just on top of the core. All right, so that looks good. Let's go ahead and undo our inflation because we want to analyze the shell model. All right, so let's go to the sim. We'll set up our constraints and loads. Let's go ahead and turn off the geometry that we don't need. And we'll put a fixed translation constraint around the perimeter of the part. And then we'll apply a G load.
All right, so that should be ready to go. Let's go ahead and solve. And here I'll pause the movie. And you can see it only takes six seconds to run. Let's go ahead and take a look at the results. Now we do laminate post-processing in uh, other videos, which I won't show here, but here we can see the displacement is a little over half of a mil, and we can animate that as well. Now let's say optimally under this load we'd like it to be less than half of a mil. So let's go ahead and make some changes to our layup. So even though this came in from FiberSim, we can easily copy and paste plies from the layup. Here we'll go ahead and paste some more up above all of the plies. And since those plies that we copied were full body plies, these pasted plies will also be full body plies. We could select a different set of faces that we'd like to apply those to as well. We'll leave it as the full body plies. Go ahead and update our global layups and zones and we're ready to solve again. So that I can keep the original results, I'll go ahead and clone that solution. And we'll solve. Again, I'll pause the video. You can see in another seven seconds we've got updated results. And we can view those side by side with our original results. Here, I'll synchronize the views and we can see that now we're under half a mil for our updated laminate. All right, the last step is to ensure producibility. To do that, we need to pass the ply deck back to FiberSim, and that's very easy by exporting those plies to FiberSim as an H5 file. Thank you.